Employees with low engagement at work displayed a revealing pattern throughout the day. They started the day with people they liked, spent most of the morning with people they didn't care for, apparently went to lunch with people they liked, had a miserable afternoon with co-workers, and then, before ending the workday, joined back up with the people they liked. In contrast, engaged employees had a more consistent experience. They gave high ratings to the people they were with throughout the day. Welcome to Philosopher Insights, the podcast that delivers wisdom in minutes a day that you can put into practice daily and strive to master over a lifetime. The podcast committed to sharing ideas that encourage you to bridge the gap between who you are today and the person you aspire to be in the future. Hi, my name is Herb Lamba and welcome to my podcast where I will share practical insights from the world's best authors. Knowledge isn't power, applied knowledge is. The quest to become the best version of you starts right now. Hi, and welcome to today's edition of Philosopher Insights. Today we're discussing well-being at work, how to build resilient and thriving teams. The author is Jim Clifton and Jim Harder, and this book is published in 2021. I want to share a number of my favorite insights from this book, starting with best possible life scale, the worst part of the day, engaged employees, career well-being actions, best friends at work, Money and Happiness, Life Matters Beyond Work, Build Net Thriving Culture, and Finishing Off with Risks. So let's start with the introduction. Quote, What if the next global crisis is a mental health pandemic? It is here now. At this writing, the U.S. Census Bureau finds that a third of Americans are showing signs of clinical anxiety or depression. This is a huge jump from even before the COVID-19 pandemic. As anxiety and stress soar, so does hopelessness, too often followed by suicides, including deaths of despair. Deaths of despair are suicides and deaths caused by fatal behavior such as drug overdoses and liver failure from chronic alcohol consumption. Think of deaths of despair like suicide in slow motion. Gallup knows that a mental health pandemic can kill hundreds of thousands of citizens just as a coronavirus pandemic can. In a 2020 worldwide survey, Gallup found that roughly 7 in 10 people are struggling or suffering in their lives. There are still no organizational benchmarks for the most critical issues of all, the state of mental health and well-being. There are no formal agreed-upon metrics for the states of suffering, struggling, and thriving. There is still no official statistics for worldwide workplace well-being. There are no official statistics for how are your employees making it through COVID-19 and a crashing economy. Gallup's goal is to discover and quantify the difference between the best possible life and the worst possible life. The metrics we use to report the best possible life is what we call net thriving. Gallup recommends that every big and small organization in the world immediately adopt this metric to estimate and track GNT. Gallup Net Thriving, across their organizations and constituencies. One of the single biggest discoveries Gallup has ever made is this. What the whole world wants is a good job. People want a job that uses their God-given strengths every day with a manager that encourages their development. My job and my manager are the two strongest links to net thriving. The five key elements of well-being are career, social, financial, physical, and community, in that order. Career well-being is first because Gallup finds that this element is the very foundation of the best possible life. Everything starts there, end quote. I captured this from the introduction of this incredibly insightful book. In the Optimize Coach program, we focused on eudaimonia, humans flourishing and living well as an imperative to the human condition. When you put eudaimonia together with arete to express our highest potential moment to moment, there is no place for remorse or any other negative emotions. When we convey everything we're capable of at any given moment, we are thriving, or what Martin Seligman refers to as flourishing. This book, in my opinion, should be required reading for any business or leadership team that lacks the clarity they require regarding the state of mental health in their workplace. Insight number one, best possible life scale. Quote, 
If you want to know the well-being of your employees, this two-part question, called the best possible life scale, is the best question item Gallup Analytics has ever found to measure GNT because it encompasses all aspects of an individual's well-being. Please imagine a ladder with steps numbered from 0 at the bottom to 10 at the top. The top of the ladder represents the best possible life for you, and the bottom of the ladder represents the worst possible life for you. With question 1, on which step of the ladder would you say you personally feel you stand on at this time? And then question 2, on which step do you think you will stand on in about 5 years from now? Let's call the two part of the best possible life scale, best life present and best life future. They are both important because one reveals your current state, which influences your directions right now, and the other reveals your hope for the future, end quote. Gallup uses the global net thriving scale to predict health and happiness along with negative outcomes such as chronic stress, burnout, and depression. Best life present and best life future provides important indicators to measure if a person is suffering, struggling, or thriving. Once again, it comes down to our choices today and our thoughts and visions about the future. We need both to improve our state of well-being. Quote, At the low end of each element of well-being is a state of suffering. For social well-being, that is extreme loneliness. For financial well-being, worry and high stress. For physical well-being, chronic body pain. For community well-being, fear for personal safety. Anyone in one of these suffering states needs to be rescued on that specific element. But generally speaking, the best starting point is career well-being, end quote. Insight number two, the worst part of the day. Spending time with their manager is the worst part of the day for employees, according to an approach called National Time Accounting that asks people detailed questions about their time use throughout the day, end quote. Organizations must recognize the harm that abusive managers cause to their workers. Poor management skills, according to academic research, led to alcohol and drug issues, insomnia, and a number of other risky behaviors. Organizations can no longer afford to assume that leaders and managers have the skills to successfully deal with the well-being challenges of today. If you currently lead a team or are part of an organization where the focus on well-being may be undervalued, what small actions could you take to drive positive change? The COVID-19 pandemic has altered the way we work, and it is unlikely that things will ever be the same again. It is up to every one of us to examine and decide if we are aiding the resolution of today's well-being concerns or contributing to them. It starts by being the change you want to see in your company. Insight number three, engaged employees. Quote, an engaged employee wakes up in the morning thinking about the work they are going to do that day, and that work is interesting and challenging to them. They know that they have the skills and talents to be successful. They enjoy the work as much or more than the paycheck, and they know that when they accomplish something, the people around them are going to notice and appreciate it. Engaged employees work more hours. Their work life spills over into their personal life in positive ways. People with high career well-being are more than twice as likely to be thriving in their lives overall, end quote. If the employees in your organization are living for the weekends, that is a clear indication that they are not thriving. It is imperative that we understand where our employees stand today. Are they thriving? Insight number four, career well-being actions. The chapter on career well-being concludes with action steps for leaders. First, make sure everyone in your organization knows their strengths. Two, make an active effort to remove abusive or unqualified managers. Three, upskill managers to move from boss to coach. And four, make well-being part of career development conversations. All of these actions appeal to me, but upskilling managers to help them transition from boss to coach really stands out. Managers must learn to set goals and provide meaningful feedback on a regular basis throughout the year. Insight number five, best friend at work. Quote, employees are much more productive and deliver far better results if they have a best friend at work. 
This is one of Gallup's most compelling and controversial workplace findings. If organizations doubled the percentage of their employees who have a best friend at work, they would realize fewer safety incidents, higher customer ratings, and as much as 10% higher profit margins. People spend less time second-guessing their co-workers' motives and intentions and more time having transparent conversations that lead to high productivity. Friends go out of their way for friends. End quote. Wow, that's a huge discovery from the book's social well-being chapter. It makes sense because the more friends people make at work, the higher the trust among employees, resulting in a better office culture. The relationships we make at work not only make our personal lives better, they positively impact our work lives as well. Quote, Employees with low engagement at work displayed a revealing pattern throughout the day. They started the day with people they liked, spent most of the morning with people they didn't care for, apparently went to lunch with people they liked, had a miserable afternoon with co-workers, and then, before ending the workday, joined back up with the people they liked. In contrast, engaged employees had a more consistent experience. They gave high ratings to the people they were with throughout the day. The importance of social well-being at work is highlighted by these studies, and the negative impacts of prolonged loneliness are widely known. The quality of social time is also important, and daily mood improves with each hour of social time up to six hours. Extensive study has proven that the people in your life, even those a few degrees away, have a significant impact on your health. Your healthy decisions are also influenced by those around you. Friends of friends can influence social contagion of all types of behavior, which means you're influenced by people you've never met. Quote, the key insight here is simple. People are intrinsically motivated to do much more for their friends. They look forward to seeing them, helping them out when asked, and ask them for help too. They have someone who recognizes their good work and who supports them when things go wrong. End quote. Insight number six, money and happiness. Quote, does money buy happiness? Philosophers have debated that question for centuries. But it turns out this may not be the right question. A better question for organizations and their employees might be, how does money buy happiness? Regardless of how much any job pays, no organization benefits from worried and stressed out employees. Above an annual income of $90,000 in 2021 dollars, on average, daily emotions do not improve with increases in income. Many people make a lot of money and yet feel financially insecure. They spend outside their means and accumulate credit card debt trying to keep up with or outdo their peers. Others make a lot less but are financially secure, and they can do many of the things they want to do without worrying about money. That feeling is the core of financial well-being, end quote. The belief that you have more than enough money to do whatever you want affects your overall happiness three times more than your salary. Quote, people will change jobs for increases in income, but their desire to move isn't entirely driven by money. Gallup found that the amount of money someone will change jobs for depends on their engagement and career well-being. Actively disengaged workers will change jobs for almost any raise while the majority of engaged workers would require more than a 20% raise to leave their current company, end quote. Understanding and appreciating this is critical for business. Money isn't the only factor that motivates people to look for work elsewhere. Employees will be more engaged and less inclined to leave if employers invest in their career well-being. Insight number seven, life matters beyond work. A meaningful job that makes the world a better place is important for your employees' well-being. People want to know that their life matters beyond work. This sense of purpose is most powerful at the local level. No matter how digital society has become, people still live in physical places that form the foundation of their social lives. Although you could communicate and travel around the world like never before, you have the greatest influence and leverage with those in your immediate community. 
A Gallup survey found that 9 in 10 people reported an emotional boost from giving back and volunteering, end quote. As business leaders, we can influence community well-being by encouraging employees to participate in community programs that are personally meaningful to them, or by providing opportunities for employees to share what they are doing in their community with coworkers and finding ways to reward their involvement. Insight number eight, build a net thriving culture. Quote, most organizational leaders list culture as a top priority. They can count on a net thriving culture to bring high energy, innovation, and agility to customer needs in good times and amid crises. To develop a net thriving culture, first, it is important that your executives and managers are thriving in all five elements of well-being themselves. When your leaders are thriving, it spreads to the rest of the organization. Next, those leaders and managers need to understand that the development of each employee is an end in itself, end quote. Here are a handful of tips for organizations to consider when building a net thriving culture. One, well-being initiatives that start at the CEO levels are most effective. Being surrounded by people who make good decisions is one of the most effective strategies to promote well-being. It all starts at the top and filters its way down the company. Two, equip managers to include well-being as part of performance reviews. Employee development should include well-being goals. Managers are in the best position to know the specific needs of the individuals on their team. Number three, develop a network of well-being coaches who collect and share best practices. The ultimate goal is for employees to have tools and access to the best guidance when they need it. Every company has influencers that are skilled at bringing people together and encouraging participation. Determine who your influencers are and how to use them. How many of these recommendations are being applied where you work? Insight number nine, risks to net thriving culture. Employee mental health, quote, well-being actually recovers more rapidly from the death of a spouse than it does from a sustained period of unemployment. But the unemployed aren't the only ones who battle mental health problems. People who have jobs are at risk of emotional problems too. In Germany and in the U.S., Gallup found that people with a bad manager had even worse well-being than those without jobs, end quote. Wow, again! just highlights the importance of ensuring organizations have the right managers in place with the proper training to ensure the impact of their employee well-being is minimized. 2. Poorly skilled managers. Quote, of the four risks, poorly skilled managers are the greatest risk. Managers are the single most important factor in the engagement and performance of your workforce. The benefits of regular, meaningful feedback for those who work remotely 80 to 100% of the time are even greater than those who work on site, end quote. The other two risks identified were over-reliance on policies and perks and lack of clarity and purpose. I hope you enjoyed a few of my favorite takeaways from this enlightening book, a book that I feel organizational leaders should have in their hands as they navigate today's challenging times. You've been listening to Philosopher Insights with your host, Herb Lambert. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To go deeper with me, you can register for free at www.philosopherinsights.com for instant access to a growing library of Philosopher Insights, which are 8 to 10 page PDFs plus 20-minute MP3s that break down my favorite insights from the world's best personal development books. To catch all the latest from me, you can follow me on Facebook at Optimal Herb. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.